fuck, Felicia Michaels? December 27th. And I have not sat down since, like, December 3rd. Well, you know? It's time for you to fucking sit down and yeah. fan that ass yeah. and get back to you. I'm exhausted. You know, it's like every year you fucking wait and you're like, ah, oh, that's it, Christmas Day. You're like, thank you. In the back of your mind, I don't care how positive you are about things. Like that Sunday night, I remember sitting there by 8 o'clock and going, that's it, it's fucking over till next year. Like the charade is over, back to work, let's go. Uh -huh. Let's yeah. do it. The next time we do this shit, we'll, be, we'll know whether the minds were for real or whether they fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. It's Christmas. I love this time of the year, but the other part of me wants it to end. You know, like one part of me is like, thank God we're done January. Yeah. Let's face the fucking reality of it. <laughs> it's you know, true. It's, yeah, let's get yeah. the visa bill and see well, what I the hate, damage really fucking was. You know I hate saying? when it's that time around the 27th where you do want to get back to work, but then you're like, fuck, now New Year's, there's more money. More money. And yeah. it's another week yeah. because the week after New Year's, people are mummified too. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's fucking New Year's. I don't expect you to fly back on the 3rd and go back to work. You know what I'm saying? You want to come back like on the 8th and your mind's still, you know, eating fucking Pop Tarts with your mom and. I yeah. understand. I understand the pain. I took my kids uh, snowboarding, and uh, and that was fun. I figured out a few things. I figured out that burnt popcorn will kill the smell of anything in a hotel room. Like if you have a microwave in your hotel room, if you have one of those hotel rooms, burn some popcorn in the microwave. It'll kill any smell. Take that information however you want to use it. <laughs> to For breakfast this morning, I ate a steak. But I thought I had shrimp, so I cut, a, I cut like eight cloves of garlic. And when I realized I had no shrimp, I had these eight cloves cut up, and I just threw it into the steak for breakfast. The fart that's going to come out of my ass at about 1 o'clock, that popcorn is not going to solve that equation. Trust no, me. you don't think I'm, so? I'm already, oh, garlic fart. You ever go to that garlic restaurant in <laughs> La <Sienica laughs> Yes, And then yes, go to the comedy yes. store afterwards. That's a fun restaurant. And about an hour later, you feel this fart in your rib, and you're like, what the yeah. fuck is this feeling? And next thing you know, you smell it, your ass fucking expands like a snake with a fucking rat in his mouth anyway well that's how it must feel for you we're back bitches being the beast podcast joey diaz sexy motherfucking felicia michaels you're so cute hey thank you uh you know i don't know if the listeners know my wife went away but felicia uh the christmas party you had was fucking tremendous Deanna. that was fun right you know i like going to christmas parties when you forget it's kind of christmas in a way and then you remember it later yeah like that's what a christmas party is really for like you get there and you're nervous. What do I bring? Am I bring a wine? What's the? Then you walk in and you get a taken, and then you realize I'm here and it ain't that bad. Right. You know, it's not that bad. And we did yeah. the podcast and we shot a commercial and you know the that kids were fun, here. Right? And, you know, that was fun, right? That was fun. The activity partner was here and you know the activity partner was like hanging gels yeah. on the lights so when we I got didn't in, look he dead. He did the fucking yeah. lights and the sounds yeah. and yeah, blah that blah was blah. Crazy. And, Daniel Stewart and uh, T-Ball. I want to thank them again. For yeah, that was show. really cool uh, to see uh, Jason uh, with Danielle interact. I never see them together that much. It's either one or the other. Yeah, it was, was really funny. It was, it was fun. He, she said something about what's the most craziest place you had sex. And he looked at it and he goes, come on, Danielle. I know you got about 12 of them. And I was sitting right there and I'm like, this <laughs> fucking guy, he's so nuts with it. And she'll pop into a story about anything right oh, in front yeah, of him. It's yeah. great. It's great to see him. He brought his mother. And the fucking the mother's boyfriend who was yes listen yeah. if I smoked pot for eighty years I wasn't as high as he was that night that guy was tuned up and I loved it I was talking to him outside of a his name was Gold something yeah Gold yeah Gold man of Goldstein he was just very interesting so uh, sometimes it takes a nice Jew to make you forget about the holidays you know very what I'm very Fuck true it. very true and by the way Gary Myrick was here you yes, met he Gary was. he's the guy that did the theme music that we have. Very nice guy, and I'm going to ask him for some more music for other stuff. That's it, man. You know, the guy. holidays yeah. are a yeah, promise. Fun. That's it. It's over. New Year's, you know, is here. That'll be fucking fast. And we're back. And it's 2012. We're going to see if the Mayans were correct to see if they really had it down or if it's bullshit. But I hope it, I hope it inspires people that maybe on the 13th when they wake up, a rock is going to hit the fucking country. So if there's something you want to do, me, I think I'm going to learn how to play the guitar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just to be safe. Is that see that missile coming at us? I'll I'll be playing stay away to fucking heaven and that'll be my uh I'll make peace with myself at some yeah, point. You yeah. gotta do shit that you never wanted to do and I hope that everybody has a healthy new year, but also at the same time, you know, if you got something you wanna fucking do, do it. You know, oh, go yeah. for it. You know, yeah. it's not gonna be easy. And it's funny, Felicia. We've been getting a lot of comments lately about the podcast and where it's been going, how we started at first just telling our stories. And how we brought guests on and guests, you know, people are like the guests have been really good. Uh -huh. And uh, 
we, when we, when we had this podcast at first, even when we do, weren't doing guests, I always told you that if I had a guest, I wanted it to be this next guy. And yeah, he won the last comic standing or whatever, and I'm really proud of him for that. It's what the struggle he put up with that. And uh, let's, I'm talking about my main man, Felipe. Boom, boom. Where's the envelope? Uh, the, the tea bag, Esparza. You know what I'm saying? What's up, fool? What's up, beautiful? All right. <laughs> Felicia says she bumped into you guys at the Laugh Factory the other day, uh-huh. giving out food, which is very nice. You know, I've never done that in all my years. You've here. never done that? No, I don't think Jamie likes me. So I, it's, it's like if I showed up, it'd be a creepy <laughs> way for me to show up. Like, look, I'm giving away food, so like me. So that's, <laughs> I wanted just, I was going to say something to you in front of the kids the other day, uh-huh. and I didn't want to. But when she said you were giving away food, you've been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah. And how is it? You like it? It was fun, you know. I'm, I'm finally moved up to um, Sweet Potatoes. Okay. Because normally, like, Jay Masala, he has, like, the the real headliners pass out the turkey right there because, you know, the K- KTLA or Fox News <laughs> might show up. <laughs> That's very so true, by the way. So he wants to have stars there. There is a pecking there. order to the he food. He wants to have stars. Dave Cook's always on turkey and dark turkey. Kevin Neely was on the side of Stout. me. And let me tell you, man, if you're a nobody <laughs> on Sweet Potatoes, Jamie will go in there and go, um... Can you bring in um, somebody bigger For to pass out? Yeah. Just in case the yeah. camera shows up. I got to have big stars Barbara here. Jiggers yeah. don't show no more? He didn't show up this time, but he was there on Thanksgiving. Okay, did yeah. you show up on Thanksgiving also? Yeah, I did. I you did the did 5 do- and 7 o'clock show. And that's amazing. And when you're there, how do you feel when you're giving well, away the food? I feel good giving out the food. I feel I used to feel nervous going up on stage. But now, you know, I don't I don't care, you know. It's, it's an ego killer because that crowd not paying attention. And they're all drug addicts. You know, some of them are homeless. Some of them are struggling. <laughs> some, some of them are struggling you know. actors. Like, you meet a guy there, you know, know, you're having a conversation with a guy, he'll tell you, oh, you like to I'm wearing a Ramon shirt. And he told me, yeah, I was in a, I was in a Ramon video in 82. And I said, yeah. and he's still living off that. That was his big highlight. He was in the Ramones video. Yeah, so I went up on stage, you know, i just be honest. I asked the audience, you know, be who want, who's here want, can't wait to go back outside and do more drugs? Everybody starts clapping. <laughs> yeah, they, I know you guys never seen me on HBO, Showtime, but you guys see me coming out of Rouse, Rite Aid, CBS. I guess I don't, I guess I'm going. But it was funny because everybody, like, some people don't want to go up, you know, because it's a tough crowd. It uh, is tough. Tiffany uh, tough. Ha- Haddish, is that her name? Haddish? Haddish. Tiffany Haddish. Someone heckled her. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome she totally took care of it but it was awesome it was fun she laughed at it too it was just so like can you believe this shit when you, you guys know? leave there what do you feel like when you both leave there what do you feel like do you how long have you been doing it for Felicia how many I've years gone, I didn't go last year but I went like three years in a row before that you know what honestly like you feel uh, uh, good that you're doing something but you know but you also feel bad I do when I leave like oh okay. Was that my token good thing to do for the year? I kind of feel that way too, like kind of shitty about it. But the best part of it is, is that there are kids that come through there. There are families that are struggling that come through there. Uh, Comics come through and eat. And the best part is you get to not only, you know, feel like you're doing something, but you also get to see all the other comics you don't see ever in a room together, ever, you know, from everyone from a guy that's been doing it six months to, you know, someone that's been doing it, Tom Dreesen, you know what I mean, Paul Mooney, Paul, I took my kids, Joey, to the Laugh Factory to help make them help uh, hand out stuff too, and they got to meet Paul Mooney, and I said to them, this guy used to, uh, didn't you write for Pryor, this guy used to write for Pryor, like, realize who you're, you're meeting and shaking their hand, realize it, you know, it was a really cool experience. And they got to meet Felipe. They were so excited. Yeah, when I came down, he well, said, that's Felipe. It was, was a pleasure meeting your kids, by the way. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting your kids, by the way. <laughs> Felipe, it's really funny because I don't know the whole story, so I want you to talk about it. I went to uh, Laurel Market, the farmer's market. I usually go there with my wife. And about a, two months ago, I started seeing <coughs> the industry you were involved with. What's the name? Homeboy Industry. Homeboy Industry. And they were selling like taco shells and... Yeah, they got corn chips now and salsa. Corn chips and salsa, and they have. And I bought something one time. My wife got it, and I got it. And I don't think I ate it, but I bought it, and I bought it because of you, because I don't know the story. Tell me the fucking story, so I know how did you get. What's the guy's name at home? Father Greg Boyle. And how long do you know Father Greg Boyle? I know him since I was in a, probably the sixth grade. And how'd you meet him? Um, he was a regular. Ch- like we would go to. Um, my parents would go to like Spanish church. 
and we will try to get up early to get the English one in at seven, because then after that the Spanish one just gets boring, you know. And they would make us go to church every Sunday, and we would never went to church. We just get the flyer from the church to prove that we <laughs> went. <laughs> so Father Greg Boyle, he had like a youth program where a lot of kids would hang out on Friday, and we'll talk a little bit about feelings or getting to know something. And then he'll take us to a trip, like we'll go cruising somewhere. I remember the first time I met him, I lied to him. I told him I lived in, I lived in West Hollywood just to go cruise UCLA. And he went to West Hollywood. And he goes, you don't live here? Nah, he said, I've never been here before. I want to see it. <laughs> and it was, uh, and how'd you get involved with him deeper through the years? Oh, pretty much um, being uh, hanging out. Like when I was a kid, I got this girl pregnant, you know, and we were together for a while. And I don't know what the hell I was going to do. Then it, we were hit by earthquake too. 94? A, no, it was 87. 87. 87 or 88. It was a big Whittier Narrows earthquake. And then like she was pregnant and I wasn't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I was going to do with my life. I had no ambition. I had no goals. I was 19 years old. I thought the world was over. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's... And then now, uh, Father Greg Boyle, I was 19 years old and he helped me get a job at this hotel the Marina Hotel, his his sister, she was a manager there and she got me the job. So this is this is before homeboy industry. This is before the idea of helping anybody out. He just did us a favor. Okay, I'll help you out. I know you got a little pregnant. I lasted like, two weeks at that job. I, f I got fired or I quit. I sucked. And then um, after that, like I was struggling, man. What am I gonna do? I met um, my friend Coco, Ronald Page. He, he, um, he's, he's dead now. He got killed in prison in Atlanta. He had like he was a crip, you know, and he had he was selling drugs, and I knew him since high school, you know, since junior high, since elementary. He's always been my best friend, you know. Like he watched my back if anybody picked on me, he got in front of their face, and him and I used to always clown each other. Like he was he used to make fun of my mom, you know, and I would make fun of his mom too. But it got it was it used to get it got really ugly in, in um, junior high. We did like. We just battled each other, right? And I and I, I found I got material from other people that made fun of him. I found out his mom had one nipple. <laughs> and then he had a mole, like I have a mole on my face. He had mm -hmm. the same mole between his on his on his mustache. Uh -huh. And I remember I told him that he got that's your mom's nipple right there. She gave it to you <laughs> as a souvenir. <laughs> and then <laughs> and I said, I said, give me some milk. And I was squeezing my mustache, give me some milk. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was getting mad. And then he, he was funny, man. He was a good guy. So I had a crowd of about 45 kids watching us just make fun of each other. So he came up to me. He was struggling. I was struggling. And he gave me, he gave me crack cocaine. He gave me like 520s, which is like 520s, you know. He said, just bring me back um, all of it, $100, and then I'll give you $60 worth of crack. So I'm there, you know, first time slanging, you know, never sold drugs in my life. He just put me in a spot, you know, to just stand there if anybody wants some, get some. I wasn't even there less than one hour. I got robbed. Oh. For real. I, this guy said, give you a 20. And then his friend came behind me with a, either a knife or a screwdriver, uh -huh. you know. And um, I, had, I, was, I, and, uh, I, I, I was doing this because... My girlfriend's mom at the time, she kicked me out of the house because I had no job, I had no money, so I had to do something, you know? So um, I'm there for an hour, and then some guy robs me. He put a knife to my head, my back. Then I, he takes all my dope. And I said, I started begging him for just my ID, you know, because it takes a long time to get an ID. Yeah. So he just gave me my ID. And those guys, and I just, they just pushed me, and I just took off. I went back to my friend, sad, you know? I didn't know what I was going to tell him, you know? He's going to beat me up. What's going to happen, you know? And I told him, listen, man, I just got jacked. These guys just roughed me up, and they took all your shit. Where are they at? And he went over there, and he gave me a gun. I mean, I never held a gun in my life. Here I am selling crack for the first time. Now I'm going to go. Now I have a gun in my hand, you know? I'm 19 years old, and um, we're fucking, uh, we, we walked to, the, those guys were there, and there was a guy that was there, but wasn't with those guys. And I said, he was there, and my friend hit him with a gun in the face, and you're going to shoot him right there. And I said, if I would have said that was him, he probably would have killed him. And I said, out of fear, I said, no, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. And then that, you know, that ended that, and I kept on selling 
dope for this guy and and then um i was hanging out and i was like still like i was supposed to graduate from high school that year but i didn't finish the school but i was still pretend i was going to school and hang out at this park hollenbeck park with some other fools that i was hanging around with you know that were not doing shit man we go buy burritos at this corner and you know we we, we, buy, we buy some burritos and i were like seven of us we we're all pitching in for like two burritos and these dudes come in there and they're laughing because we have like two burritos and they're like seven of us we got like two burritos and they're like seven of us and then my fr- my friends get in their face and a fight starts and we're fighting in them right there at 24 hour taco on on soto and whittier and those guys like we, we, I forgot, you know, that they got there. We, they beat the shit out of those two dudes, and whatever they left, you know, they took off in their car, and then we walked to um, the park. And I remember I was hanging out in the park right there, and I, and I was thinking, man, something told me, man, leave or something, you know, like something. Maybe it's a god or something. He said, get the hell out of there, vete, cabrón, leave. I, I told those guys, all right, um, I'm just I'm gonna go over this little bridge, and if I see those guys coming, I'll let you guys know. As soon as I made it over the bridge, those two guys came shooting at all of us. But I was already across the street, across the bridge, and I saw them scatter. And I saw this kid who was like 14 years old hit a twin brother, and he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know why we were running. He was the last one to run, and I saw him get killed right there. He got shot like seven times by those two guys that they, that laughed at us for eating two burritos. And I remember I went across, I went over there to look, and my friend carried him up. And I remember his fuck, man. This is like the all this happened in a week, you know. His his eyes were bloody and foam was coming out of his mouth, and and I like and I'm like and I'm like thinking this is horrible shit. And I think about it now, I'm thinking fuck. But back then, I'm thinking like that's crazy. And this, this dude gets killed right there. That's fucking sad, you know. And um, I remember his mom was all sad. She was crying. And we were drinking the next day. And his twin brother, every time he saw himself in the mirror, he started crying more. Wow. Wow. Did that, uh, uh, how did that change for you? I mean, what happened then? Is this where you met? Uh, Father Boyle? Yeah. Nah. I didn't meet him <laughs> yet. I knew who he was. You know, I, I knew who he was, but after that, you know, um, I started like selling dope at a, at a different corner, cause all the dope was being sold by my elementary school where I grew up at, uh-huh. at Utah Elementary. That's where all the dope started. Then it moved up to where my mom lives. Uh-huh. You know, it just changes. But um, were you doing the drugs? No, not time? yet. I was still not doing drugs. I had just started smoking weed barely for the first time, but I was already drinking. I was drinking since I was fifteen. Yeah. I used to hang around with the Native Americans, and they were they used to call us the young drunks instead of young guns, mm-hmm. the young drunks. Because <laughs> my mom used to have my mom and dad used to have these crazy parties, you know, like they start off on Friday and everybody's loud, you know, you know, you try, that's, what, that's, the, that's that's the first time I heard like salsa music, you know, they try to take a little peek and you hear your mom, your dad, yeah, go to sleep, but in English, duermete, cabrón, mañana la escuela, cabrón, mañana la escuela. And he's screaming like a fucking two in the morning. Tomorrow you have school. You know, it's like Tuesday. <laughs> so little by little, me and my brother, when my dad was looking, we start drinking his beers. You know, we're like 14. You know, we go to parties. We're drinking beer. We're taking shots. Nobody paying attention. Nobody's giving a fuck, man. So I, mean, I need money, man. I always was good at money. Like I was always good like, like stealing and grabbing shit. You know, like I remember I saw these crackheads. They were selling a drum set. Cause they were lofts, not lofts, but they had a, they were had warehouses where I lived. We used to break into the warehouses, and some of those warehouses were lofts now. But you know, we don't know what that was. We just thought those fools live in the factories. You know, these fools live in the factories, and these crackheads they stole a whole drum set from a band, I guess, uh-huh. and they wanted like money. I thought I gave them. I sold. I I bought all their gear. For three pieces of crack, sixty dollars. I sold it. I bought it, and then I I took it to my house. The next day, I sold it for two hundred and fifty player. <laughs> Triple the money. Wow. Yeah, man. Let me ask you this: After you exploited these oh, crack shit. dealers, is this when you realized that you were gonna go see Father Boy? Hell no. 
<laughs> Hell no. Nah. Father Boyle. Jeez, Father that story must be like fucking this. frightening. I had another guy who came up to me, and he knew that I was a cool guy. And um, <laughs> put it this way, man. Um, sure, you got drum sets for 250 Man, we were fucking... Um, we were, I was selling this guy who used to sell dope in the neighborhood. He was big time. Like, this guy had like seven cars. He was barely 23 years old. And uh, he came to me, he gave me an offer. He said, man, would you like to hold a suitcase full of crack in, in your house? And I'll pay you $250 a week just to have it at your house. You know, me being like the guy who wants easy money, I said, fuck yeah, I'll leave it under my fucking kid's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> So I used to hide the dope <laughs> under my kid's room, under the, uh -huh. and then he would come in and he, he would like, he might uh, kick, kick everybody out of the house, out of the room, and I just leave him them there by himself. He'll take out whatever he wanted to take out of that suitcase. No questions asked, he'll leave. And nobody saw him come in, he'll take off. Then one time he needed help pass this shit out, which I didn't think that eventually I was gonna be the, the main dude. So I, I fucking served. The first time I helped him, the cops catch me. They've caught me with an ounce and a half of crack cocaine, oh. not cut up in a bag, in a fucking bag. And um, man, cops are stupid, man. If you're gonna sneak up on somebody, cover up your badge, eh? Cause that light reflects, <laughs> asshole. That light reflects. So whatever light was on, it reflected on his badge. Uh -huh. And I told my friend, fucking the fucking cops. So he, he takes off, man. And first of all, he was a blood, okay? And the whole neighborhood was crib, which was a bad idea to be dealing with this guy. Oh, so Jesus. he Billy takes Bay. off. Jesus. He takes off and they catch me with an ounce and a half of crack cocaine. And, <coughs> and they take me to jail and they're, they do the good cop, bad cop. You know, we know you were that crib. So I knew they were wrong because he was a blood. <laughs> and um, and um, and so they didn't know. I right there, I knew he didn't know shit, right? And I knew if I start talking, they're gonna catch me. I just stood quiet. He asked me, "How do they make crack?" Well, they mix it up like quicks. They get hard, you know, like quick. So I got bailed out, man. I was out the next day, and I was I was in jail for like eight hours. The guy I was working with, mm -hmm. he ended up being a real deal. He bailed me out. He put up a house. They bailed me out. The bail was fifteen thousand dollars. Wow. He bailed me out the next day. The Were same, you surprised when he did I that? was shocked. So I kept my mouth shut. You keep your mouth shut, man. Things happen. And um, the next day, the same cops saw me coming out of the store mm -hmm. with, with milk and fucking cereal. Man, they roughed <laughs> me up right there in front of everybody. They took my shirt off. They took my underwear off. They were digging in my balls. They were like, <laughs> they were like, took everything off. They took photos of me. They pretty much made me look an idiot. And they put holes on my milk and they... They, they were pissed. Oh, Jesus. They put holes in your milk. They so they, after now, that. Is that what made you me, Father Boyle, when they put the holes in your milk? <laughs> no, <Nah>, man. <laughs> I was hanging out with my brother, Angel. I was hanging out with my brother, Angel, man. That motherfucker owed me $80. You know, he, he, he owed me and I was fucking him up like, two weeks ago. Like beating his ass. And then like, we're hanging out this one night. We're doing acid. We're doing a bunch of acid, you know. We're all frying. We're laying down on the on like this cement floor. People peed on, but we're just laying down, looking at the sky. We leave for an hour, just one hour. In one hour, my brother got shot. He got shot, and two of, two of our friends were killed. And they took off, and they were like riding, and um, and they shot at this car, and that car, and they they mad dog some car, like what's up, fools? And the guys say, what's up, fool? And then the other fools in the, my brother's car, they shot at that car, and then it was a sheriff undercover. They were yeah. there watching somebody else. My brother thought that they were gang members because they were wearing penitents. They were undercovers. So they had a 20-minute chase with a shootout with each other, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing that they were cops. And then um, when they were giving themselves up, they fucking um, they, they killed two of my friends. My brother got shot, he was paralyzed, he got shot in the neck, he got shot in the head, he got shot in the arm, he got shot in the leg, he got shot in the mouth. He was on a fucking, he was on a, um, he was in, a, he was in, he was in um, county jail hospital, but locked up. He was like, he was like in, in a coma, but with, he was handcuffed to the bed, his arms and everything, and um, 
And um, we, we got fucked up, man. The whole neighborhood got fucked up. Like, the whole neighborhood. That was the first time. That that, that event in my neighborhood felt like 9-11 to New York people. Because mm-hmm. we were tight, man. There was no drama. We were drinking. Even the fucking, um, the fucking Charlie from the liquor store, he gave us all free credit on beer that we never paid back. <laughs> and then I was, I was fucking fucked up. I thought my brother died. And I was hanging out with some other idiot. That he would, he thought my brother died too, but, and then um, right there, man, I started smoking crack that day. That day, you know, I, all the crack that I had in my pocket that belonged to other people, I did it all that night. And they were smoke crack before, so I didn't know how to smoke a crack pipe. You know, I have no skills. You know, it was just a little ratchet, and we were I smoked it all. I mean, all, and then all like my mom was. Then after that, I was fucking crackhead, man. When? How old were you at that point? I was 20, 21, uh-huh. 22 years old. And you had children? Yeah, I had two children already. Wow. How long did you stay at Crackhead for? For like another year, I, like I was like, I was, my girlfriend let totally, she just left me, like she ran off with some other guy, like, it was crazy, like she was cheating on me because I wasn't like, paying attention no more to, to anything. I remember she, this guy that she said it was her cousin, she came to pick her up and I helped him put my kids and there was a ho- the whole time she was the guy she was fucking behind my back. <laughs> the only saving grace that I have about this story is that when I thought about giving gas money, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, oh, so I was. This is when I saw Father Greg. I had smoked up all my crack. I didn't have no fucking money for for toys for Christmas. And I saw Father Greg Boyle. He'd have a beach cruiser. He didn't have a car. He would just ride his bicycle from neighborhood to neighborhood. Trying to make peace with this guy, trying to find out what, who, who's gonna shoot who, wow. you know? Because I live in a neighborhood that was like a one mile radius or less than a mile, but there was like eleven gangs, eleven. You know, you gotta be careful. You gotta have routes of where you go. So he saw me there, all cracked out, you know. And he said, "Um, I have no money to, for my kids." He gave me like this big hefty bag full of toys. <laughs> yeah, and then I, t- I gave them to my kids and. That's it. I didn't, I didn't say hello. I didn't say Merry Christmas. And um, so she ended up, my ex ended up leaving with some, for some other guy. Then I got her back. And while she was living with me, I was living at my mom's house. We were all living in one room, four of us in one little room. And um, I was already like hooked, man. And I remember the last straw was my unemployment check came and I had given it to her. And then like she was going to buy like stuff for the kids, whatever. I just took it. And then I am. Um, I took all her all her rings from her from her from her chain, her rings from her fingers, mm-hmm. and I took them all and I sold everything like for twenty bucks, and I started wow. smoking that shit up. Wow! So, what what made the change? What did you do? What was the f- when you wanted to change? What was the first thing you did? Well, she had left me already, and I was like, I was like, I was like bad news in the neighborhood. Like, I was, if I, like if you see me coming around. The person that was standing next to me, they would give him 20 bucks to take him the fuck out of there. Or like, can't fuck this guy, get him out of here. You know, I don't want to see him here. He's bad news, he's bad luck. I want to go see Terminator 2 on a drive-in theater, okay? And I was had my two liter, my two liter of, of bottle full of, of that mixture of margaritas. Mm-hmm. One they saw, the Bacardi one, the mixers. Yeah, yeah. And I was watching the movies and we were smoking PCP at the drive-in theaters. I watched the Terminator, and then when I get to my house, my neighborhood, there's this guy who had just came out of prison. And he's been messing with me the whole time, because my neighborhood doesn't hang out in this neighborhood, right? They hang out in a different neighborhood. So him and I got into this big fucking fight, like really a big fight, where he was choking me to death, and I bit half his ear off. Wow. And then I sent this motherfucker to the hospital, right? And then I was calling everybody out that was there from that neighborhood. Big mistake because I was like cool with everybody. I sent this guy to the hospital, right? And he has like a broken rib, broken, I don't know, kidney. I don't know how you break a kidney. And um, broken, missing an ear, you know, fucked up face. This guy's connected, you know, he knows a lot of dudes. He's older than me, he's like 35. And um, once I, I'm the next day, I'm still walking around. I have blood on my shirt, I have blood on my hands. I'm still smoking, doing bad stuff. And then some guy that lives in that neighborhood, he approaches me like he never did before with a bat. 
and he wanted to fight, you know, and I was getting scared. Okay, things are changing. People are, I'm, I'm feeling bad vibes from people I thought who liked me, you know, and so I'm walking with a gun now, you know. We took, I, I had this gun from a year ago. We had, um, we went inside the li- this Korean store, all dressed up like Halloween costumes to rob them, you know. We went in there, we started taking beers and everything. And this lady, she locked me in there and she was gonna go rob, she was gonna shoot one of my friends or scare him with a gun. So before she could do that, I fucking body slammed that bitch, man. I took the gun away. And um, that, that was fucked up. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, we're like, we're struggling. Uh, we're struggling wow. in, the, in the middle of the street, you know, for the gun, her and I. She's a tough Korean lady, man. She's like Margaret Cho's mom, you know, in the, in the series. <laughs> Like she don't want to let go, you know, and I'm, and she's like, I'm talking, I'm, I'm tickling her, you know, trying to tickle her, so I want to hurt her, and then finally, my, 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 I just, I just socked her, man, and she fucking let go of that fucking gun. Yeah, and she pressed charges, and they were looking at me. So we still have the same fucking gun. And then, father, I have no other where to go now. Father, my father, Greg comes to my house because my mom begs him. She's crying. My son is an idiot. And I give him the gun, you know, I'm scared, I'm crying, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to, I can't, I was so scared, I couldn't leave my mom's house to walk two steps anymore. It was bad, man. So I'm, I, I go to rehab out of fear of not dying, not out of fear of quitting drugs, because if I had a place to go to hang out and just live a normal life and keep doing drugs, I probably would have. So, I, so he picks me up, I have a black eye, a busted lip, you know, my hand is swollen and I I enter rehab that day like that. Now, wow. when did you get into comedy? Oh, when I came out of rehab, like That's I was. When I met you like two years after that. Yeah, I came out of rehab like I started comedy like in '96 and I met you in '97, right? Yeah, '97, '97. Yeah, and I thought I had come out of rehab like in '92, and I was living sober life for five years, and I I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. I was working at UPS. I had another kid coming. Well, these kids right now that from my previous relationship, I didn't see them again forever. I didn't see them again until I started doing stand-up comedy and they saw me on TV. Oh wow! So I, wow. I, I never, I grew up. I didn't know these kids. After I went to rehab, I never saw them again ever, ever again. So they were older kids. So I have a new kid now. So That's amazing. And you got into comedy, and that's where I met you. Uh, I met you in 98, 97. Well, how did you get into comedy? <clears throat> I ran out of things I wasn't good at. No, when we, were in re- when we were in rehab, there used to be this Catholic guy. I forgot his name. But he used to, he, he used to give us, like, he told us to write a goal, you know, for yourself, of five things that you want to accomplish in your life. You know, one of them was be a comedian, be funny, go to Italy, be happy. <laughs> You yeah. know. Wow. I, I I'm happy now. You know, I didn't go to Italy but I like pizza. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not sober, completely sober because I fell off the wagon in two thousand in like two thousand. Bad. How long did you go to two thousand? I was ten years sober. And then when two thousand, how long did you go after you got cleaned up when two thousand three or something? Um, two thousand six probably. Like I stopped doing I stopped drinking in two thousand two years ago again. Yeah, but it was a. It got. I think my drug, my drugs problem got worse as an adult, as a comedian, than it was when I was a teenager. Really. Yeah. I think when you. Because there's no, there was no violence involved as an adult that made me stop. You know what I mean? There was no violence and crime. You know, it was it was easier to get drugs. You know, it was it was it was enough. There was no need to sell drugs. You know, the drugs were there. They were easier to get and. I really loved it, man, more this time. I really enjoyed myself. It's crazy because I always think of a story one night, Felicia, where I knew Felipe. Uh, the first time I started smoking weed, and again, I called him to, to help me get weed. I didn't know nobody. It was crazy, but he was smoking weed, and he was drinking, and I didn't look at it. Somebody had mentioned to me that he had been to rehab. So I'm in my all-time worst, Felicia. One thing about me is I never want a Whitney story about me. So I always bought my own Coke, and I always did it by myself. And beside Jody, our friend Jody, I never did it with anybody beside Jody. Oh, and really? Do, yeah, oh, that's really? why when I stopped talking to Jody in 2005, it was easy for me to get off the blow, because I had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to go to do it no more. 
And one night, I get a call. We're at the Laugh Factory. And I get a page or something from Philippe. And, he, and I go, where are you? And he goes, I'm El Compadre. And I go, huh. And I go to El Compadre. And I go, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, I can't get a drink. I want to see if you get He says, I want to see if you get something. So I didn't know what he was talking about. I go, yeah, we can't get. I, just, I don't even know what I said about reefer. But I went inside and got 220s from myself yeah. a blow. And he's driving at the time. And I remember that we're in the car. And I didn't know he wanted to blow. I thought he was going to get reefer. And this is when I used to go to El Compadre. And, I, and this is my witness. The only guy I did blow in front of. I would do a $40 package of blow from El Compadre back to where I used to live on Schrader. And then I'd walk upstairs and deal with whatever was going on upstairs. I didn't know. It was like a mystery high. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I'll never forget getting in the car with him and going, let's go get the weed and doing the 120 and him looking at me as I'm driving, as he's driving. And I'm like, what's this fucking kid looking at? I'm just doing blow. He's seen it before. And all of a sudden I do the other nostril, the whole package. And I remember him looking at me going, you did that whole thing. And it was like, I thought it was just normal. You know, and he's the one that scared me. He's like, dog, there was a lot of blow in there. I wanted some of that. I'm like, you ain't getting none of this shit. <laughs> he did it all. <laughs> all did, of it. He did the whole wow. bag the whole at the bar, like, like and then he did the other bag. That's why I was yeah. then he, very then lucky. He, then he went to go get a, he went to go buy a burrito. And I said, what the fuck? This guy eats after? Oh, I was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Like a 40 wow. in those days was like an appetizer. Like it was like eight or nine minutes. And then I would eat. And then I'd have to do a 60 behind it. Just to really get fucking take three shits and jerk off for an hour with dead dick. But it's funny, <laughs> Felipe, that you got cleaned again All right. and you've been clean and sober for two years and everything. Do you really think that being sober helped you win last comic? I think so, man, because I was more focused You're now. More focused. Yeah. I didn't let I wasn't like, when things got me down, I didn't go look for the bottle or the blow. I think it helped me to get, get focused, you know, because I thought I would have been drinking. I would have missed appointments, you know, forget about stuff, or I forget about this. But you did it, man. I remember, and like I said, when I first got here, the first guy that ever gave me work was Felipe. He used to book a Tuesday and a Wednesday at, you know, Guadalajara Place. It's like, you know, just fucking straight up gangsters in there. One place that you didn't know what time you were going to go up. You just got there. Sometimes you went up at one, sometimes you, you had to have thick skin. You know, and then he was another place on Wednesdays where I did a cocaine joke, and I thought I was the fucking mayor on the way out. Um, the walk out. Wild Coyotes. Uh, it was Wild Coyote and the other one on Wednesday. What was Tuesday? Uh, the Daily one that's Planet. a diner now. Daily the Planet. Daily Planet off of the 605 yeah. or some shit. Yeah. And these, you know, you did that first, and you went to the comedy store. That yeah. That was your little twenty dollar gig, and then you went to the comedy. You go store. there, get that, get that meal, do your set, get a meal, you and, know, and, and that get was a like, little scam. You get know, to we the all have them, Felicia. You yeah. have them, you know. Get to the comedy store before noon. Yeah, and uh, it, it was just before crazy midnight. that I was there with Felipe, and we went through the same fucking shovels. How many gigs? What about the night we were in Fresno, and I thought I bought a gram of coke, and it was a gram of speed, and I did it the same way. Oh yeah. And by the time they got to the room, I was completely naked. Chain smoking cigarettes. Watching La Bamba. With the air on, three airs, an extra air conditioner, a fan, oh, a man. penguin, a refrigerator, <laughs> and I'm still fucking sweating. You know what I'm saying? And they're a like, penguin. what's going on, Joey? It was a fucking... And I had a girl kept calling me saying, are we going to fuck? And I'm like, you don't want none of this. This just shriveled up and went my asshole by. And I kept calling, are you coming over? I'm in room 308. I'm like, dog, it ain't fucking happening. Wow. But it's amazing that... When he told me he was going to the last comic, I just felt something. I always knew. And then he, I, I'm watching you on TV. I remember even my wife was like, this is amazing to watch. He's going to win. And hearing it. And it was like, you won last comic standing. That's fucking great. You know, it's great. Everybody else won last comic standing. They got great careers and everything. I think for Felipe, it was something more than last comic standing. You gave a lot of people hope. And by you telling this story on our podcast today, this is way beyond fucking hope. This is way beyond what I fucking knew about your brothers and, and the crack. I always knew we had fucking, we love each other because we love each other because we had crazy past and we understand each other. But I never knew. I seen Felicia's face one time. I haven't seen Felicia's face like that since we lit the wig as the hooker's wig on fire. Since you told me that story. Yeah. And I mean, I want people to know what they listen to is real. And he did it. He did it. And Fel I've, I've never won nothing in my life. Well, Felicia won Star Search, you know? So you guys are on the same fucking Hall of Fame level 
I mean, uh, you're just the sweetest. This is the truth. Yeah. This is an accomplishment. When you win something in stand up, you remember, bro, there's 60 fucking thousand doctors out there in, in the country. How many fucking stand ups are there? How many fucking good stand ups are there? And you guys are at the top of that list. But for you, Felicia, it was a girl that came from fucking nothing that came out here to strip first. And that was too old to do. Who got fired from Las Vegas the first time out there? You could have packed your little I thong. Got fired from she Las got Vegas. fired. Mitzi fired her. Mitzi you fired know what? Me from the well, comedy you at the dunes because I sucked. I'd been that. doing it about like a year. What's that? Twenty years ago? No, it's longer than that. I'd Look at her. She could still strip and make three hundred a fucking night. Can you imagine? She could have so gave up shit. then. It's There's a truth. No way I'd make you could have gave up, Felicia, no, but you didn't. This no, kid could have gave up. Now. <laughs> no, but listen, Felicia. After somebody gets fired from Las Vegas yeah. from Mitzi Shaw, think of how much yeah, of a fucking bounce back. Yeah. I didn't forget and that. And as story. the limousine was taking me back to the airport, there was a guy taking my name off the thing. <laughs> I turned oh, around from the limousine window, me? and I yeah. was like, "Oh." Most fuck. people would have said, "Fuck it, drop me <laughs> off at Star Strip. It's over." And for you, you could have tapped out, bro. You're fucking here. These are amazing stories. This is this is what. What do you think kept you going, or like what what is uh, you know, what what makes you uh, tick? Yeah, what makes you keep going and doing and and getting your shit together? Like what what what's the, you know? I just want to know use, what's going on. I don't know, man. I just want to see how far I could take myself, you know, without partying, you know, without drinking or, or or getting or losing hotel rooms for comedy clubs. You know stuff like that. Just want to be. I just want to live. <laughs> I don't want to be the fifty-five-year-old guy. You know, still looking for bumps at the comedy store. You know, fuck that shit. I don't want that shit, yeah. man. Fuck that shit. I don't want to be like you know, like hanging out. I don't want to be like the wrestler. <laughs> 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 I don't want to be that guy, man. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy that's an old comic. You know, yeah. still strung out. Showing up to Gabriel Glasser's Christmas party to get laid, you know? Yeah, fuck, fuck that <laughs> shit. Fuck that shit, bro. Oh. Fuck that shit. Wow. That's the same. You know, I don't want, you know, I see, I remember, I see comics in that, see, it's good to work the Laugh Factory Christmas, because you see comics that you, I saw comics that I started with in that line who are crazy now. You know, I, I didn't say what's up. I say, well, I say hello to one of them, you know, that's not that crazy, and he started doing his bit right in front of me. You know, but it's like, uh, man, it's, I remember being at the Montreal Comedy Festival in 2005. You know, I, I got to do a showcase, man, the next day. And I'm fucking smoking crack in Toronto. You know, wow. I, 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 I used to be proud. I, I, I used to be proud to say that I know, I know where to find crack in every city I've been to. You know, it's sad, you know, but I'm more proud of being now. Like, oh. When you're last comic standing. It's sad that I would have to call comics, you know, who are sleeping in LA to try to find me cocaine in Houston. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, you know? Yeah, I want to yeah. be the guy that calls you in the, in the 3 o'clock in the morning to tell you hello, say hey, good news. Yeah. It's just weird. I had the same... I didn't want my wife to pick me up on the floor was number one, but number two, I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want... You know, I just... It's a terrible fucking feeling. It's a terrible feeling like to pack your bags. Like, I think it's an accomplishment. I'm still in L.A. every day. We're in fucking L.A., guys. We're in the major leagues. That's it. That's it. And we're surviving, and we're on the podcast, and you won the last comic. This alone for me. Like, for me, when people say to me, well, there's more. You should be more successful. Bro, look where we came from. Us waking up and breathing and being able to go get a coffee without somebody chasing us. I don't know if you know that. To me, that's fucking success. In my neighborhood, I made Shit. it. When I, yeah. Oh, when I yeah. go to bed at night, yeah. I remember I used to go home and get high, and, and your paranoia would come in, who's going to knock on your door, the cops going to come, you have to sleep in your closet. I go to bed on my couch now with my hand on my dick. I don't even care if they look through the fucking window. You know, just the little things that I appreciate about life, you know, and that's that's what keeps you alive, Felicia. It keeps me alive. Yeah. I want to see where I could go without the fucking blow, and I can't believe it's happened. The first year without blow, I was pissed because it wasn't happening fast enough. I'm like, why isn't this happening? I've been clean and sober for a year. I should be George Carlin. But <laughs> it's a fucking, it's a, it's a learning experience. And now you're like, I don't even think about it no more. I really, I'll never do cocaine again. I know. I did 30. I did my fucking time. I got to get what I got to get. What does he say? I'm <laughs> mess up my party. Don't worry, my party. I, I got I want what's coming to me. I want what's coming to me. And that, that's what, you know. 
We're let here. Me, let me ask you this, though, Felipe. What is <clears throat> what is your a deep, dark, dirty goal? You know, that, that little goal that everyone hides in the darkest part of their heart. What is your goal with this, like with comedy? If you could have anything. Oh, my God. Now in comedy, I don't know. Have a show one day somewhere, I guess. But now, man, just to stay alive. Yeah. Yeah, man, because there was times where, man, like, damn, man. Like, I'm surprised I survived that shit. But my, my main goal when I first started was just to be a funny comedian, you know, and like every comedian, you know, like um, have your own sitcom. You know, then time passes you by. Then you get the opportunity and you can't act for shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hey, man. Yeah. You know, uh, I think you're the most successful comic I know. In oh, my heart, you, I tell you this from the bottom of my heart because I'm on the other side. I know what it's like to... And I know that when you wake, I know for me, bro, when I wake up and I look over and I see my wife and the cats are eating, you have no idea. I'm fucking, to me, that's more than anything. That's more than Madison Square Garden, you know, to me, you know. The chance that I can do these clubs and still fuck around and do TV shows, I got to give this a chance, you know. So, bro, this podcast, you're ending the year. This is oh, really the last yeah. podcast, and this was amazing because these are things I didn't even know about you. So you blew my fucking mind. I got to smoke a joint and three cigarettes just to follow that shit. <laughs> I, you know I need a saying? glass of wine for sure. Yeah, that was <laughs> just amazing, Felipe. And I want, you know, a lot of people write, and they, you know, Felicia knows this on Facebook, and just in life, people are confused and shit. You know what? All that shit got overcome by comedy. He picked a hobby and he committed, and he got yeah. some signs, and you follow him. And I, bro, I'm fucking blown away. Well, I know that uh, you had uh, brought up uh, uh, the charity that you're a part of. If someone wants to make a donation. Do oh, they could make to homeboyindustries.com. Yeah, I am. Um, I donated some of my money when I want to them. Tell them when you won the last comment. What did you do with your money? You went to two places. Tell them. Well, $250,000. You guys heard me talk about my, my, my first girlfriend, the one with the two kids, the one I put through hell, the one that hates me. Well, she filed for child support the next day after I won, and she took the 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 lump sum that she was owed for all those years that I didn't pay child support and all those years that I didn't see my kids. I didn't I didn't see my kids. They were like seventeen years old and eighteen years old. But now, um, yeah. So all that she took half of the money. And the other half, I I um I donated it to um NP one of those national broadcast radios. The one that always has donations. Right. I, I donated mm -hmm. money to them. I donated money to the rehab that I went into. They were like shocked because I haven't talked to them in years. I sent them a check. They were happy. And I sent Father Greg Boyle a check. And you I, sent me a check. You and sent I sent me a you check a check for the documentary. For the He's documentary. Oh, He's yeah. executive producer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. This is, uh, this is great. This is just... I want people to know that. You yeah, it feels good, back man. You gave it back, man. Yeah. I didn't forget it. The home, the Father Greg Boyle, he was crying when I gave him the, the check. Wow. Do you have uh, any kind of friendship with your children now? No, I don't. They uh, hate me. <laughs> they hate me. You were in touch with your daughter for a while and stuff like I was that. In, I was in touch with my daughter for a while. You know, um, it's funny how she found out about me was she was watching television, and I had did a show called Que Locos with Mike Robles and they were watching it and then Felipe Esparza came on and she asked her mom mom why does that man have my last name and her and her mom finally broke down and goes oh that's your father right there your real father all this time they had thought that the guy that she was with that was mm -hmm. a real father uh. so she never told them the truth you know she didn't tell them like you have another father somewhere or you know wow she's one of those people that I'm gonna take the kids and that's it Bitch, oh. bitch. Dog, I'm happy we ended the year with you, man. I'm happy you came by tonight. I want to give a shout out for Rizzo and my man Johnny Rock. John Rizzo's on Facebook. Uh, Martin Johnny Rizzo Rocky. puts his fucking uh, videos on there. I, I love Martin Rizzo and my man Johnny Rock was with me when we did the CD. They're in studio. Felicia, any other things you want to do? The wow, the thank show, you baby? so much for uh, coming over and uh, and hanging out with Thanks us. Thanks for having uh, me. I was just so excited today. I even cleaned up the house a little. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew you were going to be a great guest, but I, I didn't know that you were going to give the people what you gave them. And, bro, you guys heard it. Anything can happen as long as you put your fucking heart and your head to it, Felicia. 
I love well, you, Felicia. I love you Happy too, Joey. I'm so glad Happy New Year in 2012. Happy New Year. Out shit. There. Yeah. By the way, let me give a shout out to our sponsors, TaintedVisionArt.com, who uh, sponsored us for the New Year's show and gave us the Bruce Lee collection. Go to their webpage. They got some neat stuff. A lot of stuff got sold out. A lot of stuff oh, is really? gone. Like yeah. people twitted me. I went on there for the leaf and they didn't have no more. Go to Tainted Vision. The leaf is awesome. It's pretty awesome. Go see what they got. Order something. Put in BDB. B-A-D-B. Bad B. Bad B. Bad B at the 15% and you get that off. Orders over $100 or something. They ship anywhere for free. Give them a shot. They got some neat stuff on there. You're going to love it. NOCC for your medical marijuana needs. 4852 Lancashire and besides that Felicia you've made my year a lot better this year and Felipe with you this interview too. today thank you thank you you Felipe. fucking yeah, stole the show cool. watch my show I'm like, what mention my Showtime special oh, yes. that's right yes. Showtime tomorrow night yeah. December 28th December 28th they're not gonna laugh at you that's the name of the special they're not gonna laugh, laugh at you you, you take it all you know and it was, what made me feel good about my special is that the photo be, the backdrop behind me that was the old neighborhood where I used to live like first in Utah and across the street with the projects, that's the spot right there where I crossed the street to get um to get robbed the first time. And so I, you wow. took it back. I, I I'm like this with my microphone saying like, fuck you bitches, I win. <laughs> <laughs> you Stay did black, win. Felicia. I love you. Happy New Year, you beautiful You thing. too. You Follow too. me on Twitter, Funny Felipe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great one. You Bye. Too. With you, thanks. It's very light editing on that one, my love. Oh, I know.